We're live. Welcome to the Reality Check. Your host, Ben Shannon, here with you every Tuesday night. Just checking in how to put my hat on tonight to keep warm. Not for extra fashion sense. No, don't worry about that. I have none. But I just wanted to keep warm. And uh, so this week, uh, you know, we'll have to talk about Florida, of course, guns, of course. NRA, no NRA, um, and of course, UFC uh, preview for this weekend, UFC number 222. The first card that they've had that's uh, been good in a while, so we're excited for that. Definitely excited for that. Um, so where shall we begin tonight? Do we want to talk about guns in Florida because they go hand in hand? Um you know, it's crazy. You got this uh, Broward County um, just blaming, like, you have them blaming the NRA and stuff. I mean, 39 plus phone calls. Um, officers waited outside, didn't do anything, you know, while kids were dying. And excuse after excuse, but it's somebody else's fault. I mean, you know, think about it. They're so upset about that. What is it? Uh, 22 people shot last week, six died in Chicago. Nobody cared less about that, neither. You know, did these same people, um, the same students now, it's all about the students this time, because I know the Dems think that's, it's really easy, you can't attack kids, that's what they think, and you're not attacking them, you're just disagreeing, you know, you, but they think you're just going to sit there and let these kids say what they want and not answer back. So, I mean, did these students stand up when Steve Scalise was shot, remember, on the, on the softball field? You know, did they stand up when Kate Stanley was shot? I mean, not a word. She was shot by a gun. Not a word, you know. Did they stand up when the eight people were mowed down by the terrorists in New York? No. You know, it's... And where are these kids getting this money from? Isn't it really weird that they can fly here, fly there, go here, go this? You know, and then the one dude who graduated high school like two years ago is talking about he's not going to, back to school until we have gun control. Yeah, dude, when I graduated high school, I never wanted to go back neither. But, you know, um, yeah, you know, you have the whole anti gun crowd. You have CNN with their fake, their fake um, town hall. I mean, it's like, why did anybody think it was going to be anything but scripted questions? I mean, you know, what do you expect from CNN? I mean, there's no honesty there. You know, they're going to have a scripted thing. Um, they only let the people in they like. It's kind of like uh, when Obama had his deal. You know, whenever he had his uh, press conferences or all that. Oh, people with doctor's coats behind him. Or, you know, when he's doing his little Obamacare thing. Yeah, okay, anyway, you know. But he's the fake passing out. Remember that? They had the fake people passing out when Obama first started his run to make him seem important. I mean, it's just. Uh, nonsense. So don't expect anything on a center from CNN, and you won't be, you know, you won't be disappointed. Um, uh, what's the memo came out? The uh, Democrat memo of a uh, mumbo jumbo. It was by Adam Schiff. Uh, yeah, Adam Schiff or whatever Adam Schiff. And what did you expect from that? You know, you got you got what you paid for. Absolutely nothing. That's what you were going to get from that. Most of it's redacted. They know they put stuff in that they knew people couldn't see that had to be cleared. And of course, Adam Schiff, you know, just nothing of value. They didn't tell you anything. They didn't explain anything. Um, here's an interesting one this week. I was reading an article that um, it was saying that the lawyers from uh, the Democrat National uh, Committee um, they have an ongoing litigation for a fraud lawsuit, and they're um, they're basically saying that one of their defenses is um, they argued that um, I don't even know how to put this. So it sounds realistic, but um, basically, what it appears that they're arguing about they're arguing about you know the primary where. Um, somebody sued saying Bernie Sanders got cheated out of the 2016 presidential primary race. And basically these lawyers from the Democrat party are saying that 
if that's the case, the action is protected under the First Amendment. They're basically saying that DNC has the right um, to choose their candidate. So they're claiming First Amendment rights for cheating Bernie Sanders out of the win. And I mean, we can look about that eight ways till Sunday or, you know, it. it's funny because one, they lost the presidency because they cheated Bernie Sanders out of a seat. And then two, it's now all of a sudden they like the First Amendment and uh, it's just silly. They cheated. I mean, if they're, they should be honest, they should still be sued because they wasted money for the elections. If they were just going to name somebody, they should have named somebody instead of having a fraudulent election where people voted, people donated to Bernie Sanders thinking he had a chance and he absolutely had no chance because it was rigged against him. You know, the criminal got criminalized that time. He was victim that time. And so, therefore, these people did donate money and they thought of something could possibly happen, like a Bernie Sanders wife. And there was no chance of that. So, yeah, and it shouldn't be. Um, so now you get the, um, you know, we've had to talk about the NRA and you got the people talking about how we can't have the NRA involved in this and that, and they make it like you hear them talk about how, how big the NRA is and it's got all these congressmen and all that under control. And yeah, they do pump in a lot of money and I wish that all the money from politics would be gone as far as you should only be able to, I mean, you should be able to donate almost nothing. Everybody should have a budget. If I had my way, everybody would have a budget to run on. You know, if you're running for president, you have $5 million. That's your budget. You spend it, you blow it, that's too bad on you. And same thing for each race, you should have a set amount. You and the other candidates have the same amount of money, and you go from there. If you don't have a budget, your stuff, you spend it too much, you get ripped off and buy the wrong thing, too bad for you, shame on you. But that being said, they talk about how the NRA donates so much money. And you look at it, their people, their groups donate way more. The NRA is like a minor drop in the bucket. I mean, look, Planned Parenthood on average, you know, the baby killers, they spend, oh, I know, they do some health care. But, you know, in general, it's a little health care, some free condoms, or, you know, about a million plus babies a year dead. Yeah, whichever. But... Regardless of those facts, Planned Parenthood uh, donates about 10 times as much to candidates than the NRA does. And the same thing with um, unions. The unions are like a thousand percent more. I mean, so if we want to stop this corruption, they should worry about the unions first on Planned Parenthood before they worry about NRA, which are small dimes in the bucket compared to the rest of these people. You know, Florida, we can go back to the shooting with Cruz. I mean, could it have been prevented? Yes. Could it have turned out differently? Yes. Could we have reacted differently after the fact? Yes. Are there many people to blame? Yes. You know, Sheriff, it's funny, all of a sudden they like Israel now because it's Sheriff Israel and he's a, a big Dem supporter. He declared himself not responsible. Uh, it's just a disgraceful. Now it's going to be funny because I guarantee at the end of the day, half these people are going to step down from Broward County. It's coming out. There's pictures of their Lamborghinis. There's stories about uh, Sheriff Israel on his yacht trips that only cost a few hundred dollars. You know, it's only a matter of time. Only a matter of time before, you know, they do not have their priorities in order in Broward County. I mean, too busy posing, too busy standing outside. Every day the story is changing. They stood outside and watched kids die because they didn't have body cameras because of this, because of that. And then you hear the media, of course, attack Donald Trump. They talk about um, how Trump Trump said that he believes, and he didn't say definitely would. He wasn't cocky about it. He said he believed if he was in that situation that he would have entered the building, even if he was unarmed. And he didn't make it like he was conceited or great. He said, I believe everybody here would have done that, which is the case. We believe that. I would believe that I would go in and try to save kids. Now, could it have been when it happens? Maybe I'm scared. Maybe I'm nervous. And I don't. Could be. You can't really answer factually until you're there in that situation. It's different. But I, to uh, be honest, I agree exactly with what Trump said. 
most people, and you know this, I've been in situations where um, just bad situations, and you don't usually think about your own safety. You think about how can I help somebody? The majority of good person thinks, how could I go in there and help somebody? You know, how could I do something? You wouldn't just sit back, and especially if you're the police there and you're armed and trained, why wouldn't you fight back? You know, it wasn't like the school was under lockdown and there were 10 shooters. They knew who it was. They knew what it was about, you know, and yeah, it's your risk in your life, but that's the job you take, number one, to let this guy retire with full, I'm so sick of people getting full benefits, you know, just like Andy McCabe or that. No, these people convict them of the crime, take away their benefits. No pension, sorry, no retirement, you know, no garbage man getting $300,000 pension, sorry. But it's just, it's not math. It doesn't work out the pension. And especially in a case where somebody neglected to do their job and cost lives. They cost lives. Now, and then, again, back to, it was time for them to insult Trump. Trump wouldn't do this. And that's disgraceful. He'd say that. Why? He talks like a human being. Is that disgraceful? Yeah, it's disgraceful to CNN because they're a fraud organization. It's disgraceful to MSNBC, MSDNC, because... Yeah, they don't care. But uh, the bottom line of that is that Trump has actually saved somebody before. He stopped an attack in progress. You know, it's funny, 20 years ago, this guy did many things to be a hero. But all of a sudden, the minute he started running as a Republican presidential candidate, um, yeah, nobody cared. So I guess we can switch off Florida for a few seconds. Uh, I heard a joke the other day, and I don't know if it's a joke or real, but it's um, definitely believable, definitely believable. You know, basically, uh, Barack Obama announced plans to become Secretary General of the United Nations. Now, who knows if that's real? Who knows if it's a fake i could see it this guy is an egomaniac and he needs something to do in some way he thinks he's going to control america and to me i think it's good news barack obama running for any any anything in the united nations is great news because it just proves the point that we need to get out of the united nations and get out fast while we can because the united nations is a fraud we pay for almost everything. We get the least amount of I mean, where else would you sign up for an organization like that? I mean, seriously, would you personally sign up to be part of a club that you pay full, more price, actually, not even full price. Let's say you signed up for a club and you pay more than anybody else there. And, oh, by the way, you don't get to use the pool on Tuesday, and you don't get to use the pool table on Wednesday, and you can't use the showers uh, Monday through Friday, and you can't use the clubhouse this day, but everybody else can do all that. Who would, you know, I mean, I know the old saying is a, a club that takes a member like me is a club I don't need to be a member of, but regardless of that, who would be a member of a club where you pay more and you get less? I don't know. It sounds like a bad slogan for business. I don't know what anybody else thinks about that, but that's what I think. Now, let's see. Um, had a, a bunch of um, rental car companies that uh, say they're not going to honor discounts at NRA. And you know what? It's their business. Do whatever they want. You're going to lose out on it. When you give somebody something and you take it away, it becomes bitter. People just, they don't like it. They feel like they're getting ripped off. Whether it's right or wrong, it's irrelevant. It's how you feel. And the bottom line with that is if you're taking it out, the rental car companies are taking out the discount. Listen to the teenagers who are saying, don't, don't work with the NRA and threatening them. So if that's the basis of your policy, then why don't you let teenage people rent your cars? You know, just a thought. A thought there. I don't know little rental car companies like Enterprise and whatever. Just saying, if that's what you want to base your policy on, little teenagers and their tweets, you know, sorry. 
but I know when you're a victim of something, people want to lay off, and I get that. I respect that, but doesn't mean you're right about everything. You know, I was mugged once. Doesn't mean I'm right about anything I say about being mugged. You know, sorry. Just like anything that you are, it doesn't mean you're always right about it. Interesting fact. Uh, Chuck U. Schumer, uh, Mr. Anti-Gun Nut Senator, he has a permit to carry for self-defense. Now, wouldn't that be interesting, as all these political elites who want you to not have any guns and all have bodyguards with guns, they, some of them also have concealed carry permits, like Diane Feinstein, I think, is another one. So, no guns for you. You are bad. But me, me, if I'm elected official, I myself am allowed to have guns. You know, talk about... Uh, Talk about fraud. But what else is new in the land of crooked politicians? Especially like the good old Chuck U. Schumer. And let's see, what else we want to go into? You know, I once saw a movie where um, only the military and police had guns. Yeah, I think that movie was called Schindler's List. You should check it out. Stacy Dash, everyone remembers her from Clueless, been in some other films. Um, she is going to run in California for Congress. That is pretty amazing. Just the fact that one, somebody who's not a loony liberal running in California, but to actually have someone famous going out and t not only talking about something, but doing something. Very interesting, a very good campaign to follow. And if I was in California, Definitely vote for her, especially if she's running against the, you know, some of these frauds. Um, definitely be an upgrade from anything they have in California, because they have some of the worst politicians. I don't know. So another reason why uh, libs, you know, liberalism, mental disorder. They can't even be trusted to do any job that requires work these days. You know, if it's they're working somewhere and they got to cry because somebody insulted them or said something bad. If it's they don't show up to work because they're too busy protesting. And then you have the cops waiting outside in a safe space while kids die. You know, that's bad for the real cops. You know, like I said, these libs cannot be trusted to do any job that requires any work. Um, what's it this week? Hillary's still on the You Blame It tour. You know, this week it's this, this month it's that. Uh, somebody twisted the voter machine the wrong way. That's why Hillary lost, Hillary lost, Hillary lost. But finally, I think there's one she said that was, I agree with Hillary and is very truthful. Um, she's been saying now that social media was to blame for her election loss. And I totally agree with Hillary. You know, if it wasn't for the truth tellers on the social media, you know, People might actually believe the garbage that you hear spewed on the news, like MSNBC, CNN, NBC, ABC, ESPN, all that trash, you know. They might actually believe that. So they might believe that Hillary was a great person. So thank goodness that social media was there to actually give people other ideas, right? Now, um, you have Planned Parenthood and NRA, right? Who does more for the country and who does less for the country? You know, one of them sells arms and the other supports the Second Amendment. Figure that one out. Think about it. Um, so now, gun free zones. They want no guns anywhere. And that's great. Now, that works really great, right? So if that's a solution, why don't we have also suicide bomber free zones? So absolutely no killing yourself for Allah beyond said point, like, you know, put it in the airports, put it everywhere. So are we going to be safe then if we have these uh, suicide bomber free zones? Maybe or not. So Obama had some secret, it wasn't a secret meeting, but it was some non-political thing. Of course, he made political and he babbled and they didn't want him recording it or whatnot. And of course, somebody recorded it. But What's funny is, is, I mean, you got to admit, Obama has got to be a good actor. 
to say with a straight face again to this day this guy says my white house never had a scandal that embarrassed the u.s really i mean how can you even say that with, i can't even repeat that joke without laughing that's why i wouldn't be good at crank calls i might have good material but when i call up and say this is mr whatever or you know, uh, IP freely or Chucky Farley. I start cracking up. I can't help it. I don't do the calls very well. But, but Obama here can still say he never had a scandal that embarrassed the U.S. First of all, he didn't need a scandal that embarrassed the U.S. Obama. Let me tell you, your presidency in general embarrassed the U.S. But if you need help remembering, because maybe you've had a sudden case of selective memory or Alzheimer's, Fast and Furious, Benghazi, how about your DOJ attacking people, the FBI attacking people, the IRS withholding licenses and going after people, uh, you let our uranium go to Russia, uh, you gave Iran uh, pallets of cash, um, you let Hillary have a private email server, how about you traded um, five terrorists to get back another terrorist, or dessert or whatever you want to call Bergdahl. And I mean, the list goes on and on and on. I only have an hour show, Brock, so like I can't go through all of your scandals that embarrass the U.S. Now, if you want to get me in a technicality and said they humiliated the U.S. and didn't really embarrass them, uh, still wouldn't be acceptable. I don't know. But, you know, what can we say about that? Um, so... I don't know if I've ever talked too much about, I mean, I know I mentioned it once or twice, but the fake hack into the DNC, I don't believe any of that. They've never showed the computers or the evidence. So we talked a little bit about that last week. But um, I still think that it was Seth Rich who provided that information because there's no proof that it happened. And then remember, Seth Rich ended up dead. And I know his parents don't want anyone saying that, but you got to look at the evidence. And they still haven't found who did it. Hillary Clinton still calling for gun control. Now, Seth Rich supposedly was killed because they were trying to mug him. So you try to rob somebody and then you shoot them for whatever reason. And you don't take any of the stuff after you shoot them. Just, you know, I just makes no sense but what do i know right again what do i know so big let's see arizona you know big news this week uh arizona sports no the cardinals didn't get a new quarterback but we have to congratulate the um fbi on coaching and catching uh arizona coach sean miller supposedly there's a videotape of him um helping set up a payment to a player you know and good thing we have this investigation or catching all these basketball coaches you know we didn't bother to pick up nicholas cruz the boston bombers 9 11 attackers san bernardino terrorist fort hood guy you know that wrote off a lot far on his medical notes the pulse nightclub terrorist you know larry nasser got away with 20 plus years amongst many, many other criminals. Congratulations, though, FBI. You caught Sean Miller, we think. Now, can we get some priorities straight? I mean, that's great that we caught some basketball coaches doing the hokey pokey or shaping points, whatever. But really, if that's what we were doing in addition to getting other criminals, that would be great. But let's get some priorities off of Trump, Russia, and off of uh, college basketball. Let's get some priorities, you know, on what we got going on, which is, you know, terrorism from within, the enemy from within. We need to stop that first. It's very important that we stop that first. I mean, you know, I mean, I mean, I shouldn't say I mean, but I mean, because I know I mean it. Now, let's see, we can go some more sports. Let's go UFC 222 preview. March 3rd, this Saturday. It's always weird saying that because you're like, no, it's only like February 22nd, March. Oh, yeah, only 28 days this year. So, 
this Saturday, March 3rd, Las Vegas, Nevada. It was uh, supposed to be Max Holloway versus Frankie Edgar for the belt, 145-pound um, belt. But uh, obviously, things change. And um, we have a new main event, which is going to be with Cyborg, and Frankie Edgar is going to be in a co-main event. Um, one, one definite, you know, there's some prelims on FS1 for this, and I, I just got to mention some of them really interesting fights. Hector Lombard, who just looks phenomenal sometimes, and dude's a beast. And then, you know, obviously the cardio sometimes goes away. And you have C.B. Dalloway, who for us local people we know, ASU rep, former ASU wrestler. Um, and he actually was an elevator accident like, it was last year, maybe, or maybe the year before that. And so he's trying to come back and, you know, make good on his career. But uh, that ought to be an interesting fight. Um, you know, which C.B. Dalloway comes out, which Hector Lombard comes out. Um, so that's actually on the prelim card, which is pretty interesting. And then another one, you know, they're all pretty good ones on the prelim card, but another one that definitely will be interesting, and especially if you're a UFC fan, um, in the girls' division, you have Ashley Yoder. She's 5-3, and three, but that's not supposed to She's fighting Mackenzie Dern, who is 5-0, and oh, um, and it's a big name. A big name that, um, you know, she's Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. She fights, uh, she's actually an Arizona fighter. She fights from, uh, fights out of Glendale. Um, but yeah, it's a huge name for the UFC to, to sign. And we'll definitely see, um, how Mackenzie, um, you know, how she's going to fight in the UFC because you get a lot of these people, um, that, you know, she's in that fight really well in other places when it comes to UFC. And sometimes they're a little bit stumped. Sometimes they can't handle the, you know, change in it. Like from previous competition when you're fighting little local shows to coming up to the UFC. But definitely somebody you want to watch, Mackenzie, there. And not only because she's an Arizona girl. Um, I think she was born in Phoenix, actually. I know she trains. Um, but, uh, her dad, her dad was a, a highly competitive grappler. Um, so she's been training since she was a little kid and she's fought in the, what is it? Legacy. Um, she's fought at LFA. Um, she fought in Vika. And I think Enrico was her last fight that she fought, and that's the girls only fighting. So she's 5-0 in MMA. Um, grappling, she's 74-26-1, uh, and one, so that's a pretty crazy record. Um, so definitely high-level grappler taken after her dad. And that ought to be interesting to... Um, world jiu-jitsu champ multiple times it just ought to be interesting to see her in the ufc so i think that's a really good um really good prelim fight there just to watch her not particularly the fight but we'll see does she come out and struggle with a middle range fighter like ashley yoder or does mackenzie darren just impose her will and take care of this early whether it's a submission you know we'll see but on to the main card which is what we're all here for and uh, maybe if I actually underline the fighters, because my handwriting's so bad, I probably wouldn't even be able to read my own handwriting because it's that bad. So now we have, um, in the first fight on the card, interesting fights, you have Kat against Ketlin Vieira. Now, Kat Zagano was on a roll for a while. Um, she was at 1.9, and now she's lost her last two fights. She had some. She lost to Ronda Rousey was one of them, and she's had some personal issues to deal with, and then some injuries. Um, you know, Cat is really aggressive and on you, and constantly on you and attacking. And that's how she wins. That's she did that to Misha Tate. I mean, just that's how she wins. Now for Catlin. Um, the last time she fought, she submitted that former Olympian Sarah McMahon in the second round. She's 
three and zero in the UFC. She's a jujitsu, so you got the throws uh, with judo mixed in. Um, I think the one problem here, the stylistic, is like I said, Katsugano. If she fights like she did her last two fights, she will lose pretty easily. But I think she's taking the time off. Got her mind right. She's always in good shape. She should physically impose her will on Catlin. Now, the one thing is, is I think Katsugano needs to be aggressive and needs to keep on attack, and I think she'll do that. And like I said, the one thing will be with Catlin, she has a really good takedown defense, so it's going to take Zagano's full energy and constantly all three rounds till maybe she can tire Catlin in the third and take over the fight. And I think that's when... Zagano, the last few minutes of that fight, should be dominating and get a third round TKO. Because I see the old Kat Zagano coming back. Next fight, very interesting fight. You have two guys, Stefan Struve, the skyscraper, and the Pitbull Andre Olaski, former heavyweight champ. Uh, both guys have so much experience. I mean, I know Struve's younger, but he's 32. In our last 26 and 15. Um, you know, T, the knockout rate, our last 65% of his fights. Strewed about one in every four. He does have some submissions thrown in there. A few decisions, and Arlovsky has a few decisions. Strewed is, neither one's impressive in the last recent history. Strewed's two and two in his last four. Arlovsky's one and five in his last six. He won his last one. Um, they both swing hard. They both can knock people out. And then the problem is, is they both have chin susceptible. And I see them dancing around the first round, and I see Strew just taking Arlovsky out. Second round, TKO. And it's pretty much the end of the line for Arlovsky. You know, he's had a really good career. I mean, at one time when he was the heavyweight champ, he was just so exciting to watch and then he went away and he was getting knocked out and he worked on his chin and he came back to UFC and had a decent run but you know he's just getting older this guy's been in many wars and when your chin's just at that point it's, there's not much you can do about it especially when you're in the bigger weight divisions you can get away more ways than not in the bigger weights so like I said through the skyscraper, a unique fighter to watch because he's so tall. He's going to win in a second round TKO. And next up, you have uh, Sean O'Malley, who is from uh, Who Wants to Be a Contender, the Dana White Fighter Series. Um, and he's going against Andre Sokam Fath, the Asian sensation, as you can tell. From the name. But uh, Sean O'Malley, should I call him Sugar? Lanky guy, um, 72 inch reach, you know, long legs. He's nine and now. Um, he KOs more than half the people he fights. Um, the guy's pretty creative and pretty smart. Um, so that's why he didn't look super impressive, but he just, one of those guys. He does enough to win. He needs to come on late in the third, or he needs to, whatever he needs to do, he seems to be able to do that. And, you know, that's good. It's good to have a guy who can finish it off, a, a winner, or like a, in baseball, if you were talking about, that'd be the guy that could come in and get a save. Sean O'Malley, um, I think if he can avoid the early knockout, you know, not get touched up too much by Andre, um, and I think he'll tough out the rest of the fight, whatever he needs to do, bring it hard in the third. And I think he'll win. I'll need to move to 10 now by unanimous decision. I think he just asked Andre. Next up, we have the co-main event. Frankie Edgar versus Brian Ortega. Now, to me, just looking at this as a fan, you know, you got the answer versus T-City. You got... Frankie Edgar, one and five versus Brian Ortega's thirteen now. You got Frankie Edgar who 
only lost one match his whole life that hasn't been a title belt. You know, he's only fought the top people. I mean, you know, in the last decade, this guy's only fought the top fighters. He used to fight all and he's never won really 40 and cut weight, but he's just this size. Um, you know, have Brian Ortega. I was talking about Sean O'Malley. Brian Ortega is that and better as far as being able to find a way to win. And what's crazy about is Ortega, he could knock you out. He could submit you. He could win by decision. He can do it anyway. And that's how he ends up undefeated. Uh, I personally like both guys. I know everybody knows I like Frank. He's one of my favorite fighters. And Ortega is like rising up that chart to become one of my favorite fighters, which is going to be sad here because one of these guys has to lose. But I mean, Frankie is just super. I mean, he's been involved in some of the greatest fights in the UFC history. I mean, you know, if you ever want to see from the beginning, the two fights he had. Uh, with Gray Maynard. I mean, some of the best action fights you'll see in the UFC. And like I said, Ortega's undefeated. He just um, choked out Cub Swanson in an impressive win that showed that Brian Ortega isn't just some guy beating up these guys, you know, coming up and then he's going to learn his lesson. He's here to stay. I think one day Ortega can be a champ, you know, barring any injury or stuff. He's just that good. Now, the thing is, is he that good right now? Is he that good enough to take Frankie Edgar out? Um, and I think, one thing I think is, man, this should be the main event. I know the next fight is a title fight. Um, the main event's a title fight, you know, with Cyborg in it, but this should be the, this should be the main event just because the simple fact of this fight i know that after three rounds you're going to want more of this fight i can tell you this is a fight that needed to be five rounds it just needed to be that way it needs to be five rounds because frank yedger has so much energy and that's like his best rounds the fourth and the I mean, you look at almost any fight he's been fourth and fifth or his best. So it'd be exciting for that. I think it would be awesome to see Ortega go five rounds. Like I said, he had your decision. And it's going to be a close one. Um, and I don't know if that's my heart talking about it. Like I said, I like both fighters. And I think one day Ortega will be the champ. But I think... For Frankie, he's going to be more focused than ever. You know, he's never let you down. Frankie's never had a fight where he didn't show up. You might not be happy with the outcome. He might have been able to do better in some fights, but he's never gone out there and got blown away. He's never got, you know, he's always found a way to survive. And that's it. Whatever Ortega hits you with, Frankie can make And Frankie's just that quick. I think Ortega... It's going to be an amazing, intriguing bat because I think Frankie can take down Ortega, but Ortega is dangerous on the bottom. He can move. He can, you know, try to get Frankie and stuff, but I've never seen Frankie get caught in anything. And that's why I guess he's the answer. And I think Frankie, not the way he did to y Yair Rodriguez where Frankie destroyed him, but I think Frankie wins this Brian Ortega bat. Val like I said, by decision, but the one caution for Frank is he needs to start quick. If he lets Ortega have his way for a little bit in a three-round fight, you're playing with fire because if you leave Ortega in this fight, it's just going to boost his confidence and he'll attack more, and then you're going to be on more of the defensive. If you can push him down right away, if you can control him, you know, and then he has to, yeah, of course, he's going to try his submissions, but if you keep on pounding him and wear him out, I think that's how it plays in for Frankie. You know, and that's the most exciting fight for me on this whole card. Um, it's two guys I like, two guys that are competitive, two guys. One guy that's already had a belt, and then Brian Ortega, I think, one will have a belt. And I think, you know, Frankie taking this fight, he wins this, he'll have a shot against Holloway. 
he'll have a shot to get that belt back, which I think he can. And then I'd love to see him against Conor McGregor because he would abuse Conor McGregor. Sorry, McGregor fans, but Edgar will abuse him. He will abuse him like he's never seen before. Now, in the main...